Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today I want to talk about something that I think is really important um, and not a lot of patients or doctors know about, and that is the connection between biotin and thyroid lab tests. So biotin, of course, is the uh, it's a vitamin, but it's it's found in a lot of uh, hair, skin, and nail supplements, and especially multivitamins as well, and a lot of supplements contain biotin. Now the problem with biotin, well, I, I wouldn't necessarily say problem, but there is an issue with it, and that is that biotin can interfere with your thyroid lab tests. And there's a lot of confusion about this. I have patients uh, that I've seen on, on my blog and on YouTube and such who will say you should never use biotin if you have thyroid problems. And I don't think that that's a, the right way of looking at this. Um, so let me just abbreviate this video if you just want a short snippet, and that is biotin definitely affects your thyroid lab tests, or I should say it can affect your thyroid lab tests, and it can cause falsely elevated numbers, but it does not interfere with your actual thyroid function. So that's a very important distinction. It interferes with the test's ability to be accurate, but it does not affect your thyroid function, at least not negatively. So that's that's sort of the main difference. But I want to dive into detail about this. I want to talk about what it does, how it changes things, why it's important to you, um, why I still think you can take vitamin, how to sort of get around this issue, um, and so on. So let's sort of jump in there. Um, so biotin, the question that a lot of people have is, does it interfere? Absolutely, it definitely interferes. In fact, what it does is it tends to cause falsely high free T3 and free T4 lab tests and cause falsely low TSH levels. So those three things, if you will, tend to go together. To illustrate this, here's an example. This is based on a study. What it did is it showed a patient um, that had th their thyroid lab tests both on and off biotin. And you can see it's a pretty dramatic um, difference. So off biotin, the TSH is 2.2. On biotin, it's 0.08, okay? So free T4 on or off biotin is 1.4. On biotin, it's 3.2. I mean, that's almost twice as high. And then same thing, free T3, 2.8, um, off biotin, and on biotin, 3.92. So again, this, these are pretty dramatic changes, and these can occur just by taking um, biotin. So how does this happen? Why is it occurring? Uh, well, it has to do with the way that the assay works for testing um, thyroid numbers in your blood. So I'm not going to get into that in detail, but essentially what is happening is biotin is interfering with that test and it's attaching to it and it's making the test show that the numbers are higher than they actually are because both biotin and thyroid hormones stick to this test. So you can think of it sort of like glue in that way. And that's why it's kind of causing um, falsely high free T3 and free T4 levels and then falsely low TSH levels. Um, so that's sort of the way that it works. Now, can this be an issue? Absolutely. Um, I don't want to discount that. Again, it doesn't mean you have to necessarily avoid biotin completely, but it, you definitely should be aware of this, uh, especially with the dramatic changes that we've already discussed up here and how it can affect it. So here's a couple of examples or a couple of ways that I think it can be can be um, potentially dangerous. So number one is in the hypothyroid case or the, the patient who has hypothyroidism. And number two is in the patient who doesn't have hypothyroidism, um, but who may look like they have hyperthyroidism. So let's talk first about that patient, probably you, who has known hypothyroidism. This is the patient that has Hashimoto's. This is the patient who um, has hypothyroidism from any other cause. And this is somebody who is taking thyroid medication. So um, imagine you're in this scenario. Imagine that you are also suffering from hair loss because that's what a lot of hypothyroid patients suffer from if they're not being treated appropriately. So you think, oh, I'm going to take some biotin to try and fix the hair loss, right? That's a pretty standard approach. I think a lot of people um, will do that. Now, here's the issue. If you take the biotin, it interferes with your lab tests and it makes your doctor think that you are actually getting, receiving more medication than what you are taking. All right, so your doctor thinks you're, even though you're hypothyroid, that you you are becoming hyperthyroid. So what the what is the doctor instinctively going to do? Reduce your dose because he thinks that he or she thinks that you're taking too much. Now that's a big deal for hypothyroid patients because that will lead to people having fluctuations in the amount of medication that medications that they're taking. And if you consider that most hypothyroid patients, at least in my opinion are probably undertreated to begin with, they're going to be further undertreated, undertreated if they reduce that dose, if they reduce, if your doctor reduces your dose of thyroid medication, which will likely trigger more worsening symptoms of hypothyroidism, which could mean more hair loss, which is, again, probably the reason you started to take biotin to begin with. You could have more fatigue, more weight gain, and so on. So this will also be confusing to you as the patient, where you're like, what am I experiencing? I, I, I feel bad already, but you're telling me I have too much, and when you reduce my dose, I feel even worse. How does this make sense? Well, biotin may be the answer. And we'll talk about what biotin is in 
um, when we get a little bit lower and talking about dose and things like this. But I just want to give you this overview right now. The second situation, and one that I do find people who um, come to my blog with, is this group of people who have, maybe they're just feeling, um, they go in for a regular checkup, or maybe they're feeling a little fatigued, which may or may not be related to their thyroid, and they have their labs tested, right? And so if they're taking biotin already, for whatever reason, and it happens to interfere with their lab test, it may paint the picture that this patient is actually hyperthyroid when that not, may not be the case at all. So we're talking a normal patient, gets their lab tested, it looks hyperthyroid. So now what do you have? Now you have a situation where your doctor is trying to, you know, maybe concern that you have hyperthyroidism and may, they may even actually want to put you on thyroid blocking medication inappropriately. <clears throat> Excuse me. So obviously this is going to be an issue for you if you fit into that category because nothing's going to make sense. You're going to have a semi-low TSH and you're going to have maybe a high free T3 and high free T4 when you have no thyroid problems to begin with. So I think that there's a fair number of people who fit into this category and I think that that's just as dangerous because the last thing you want to be want to have happen to you is be treated with a thyroid blocking medication when it's inappropriate to begin with. Okay, so those are the two main things that you need to watch out for. And, and I think these are the main reasons that as a patient, you should be aware of this interaction between biotin um, and your thyroid lab test. So having said that, I actually don't think it's that big of a deal. All right. And, and the reason is pretty simple because you can completely avoid this problem as long as you avoid taking biotin two to, well, let's say two to five days, but most people agree that somewhere between two to three days is appropriate. So let's say you're getting your blood test on Monday, stop taking your supplements on Friday. That'll give you three days. So it'd be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You should be good to go to get your blood tested on Monday. And then when you get your blood tested on Monday, you can be confident that biotin is not interfering with your results. So that's fairly straightforward, right? I mean, all you have to do is simply avoid taking it. Um, now, the problem with that is you may or may not even be aware that you're taking biotin, number one, um, and number, because well, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then number two, the effect that, or the, the degree to which biotin interferes with the, with this assay is dependent upon the dose. Okay. And so dosing actually matters. Um, and to illustrate this point, I want to talk about multivitamins and then specifically, um, hair, skin, and nail vitamins. So they tend to have different levels of biotin. So I'm, I'm looking at um, my, right here, I'm just switching pages, talking about my uh, multivitamin that's specific to the thyroid. So if you look at this one and you go to the ingredients, you'll see biotin over here has 500 micrograms per serving. So 500 micrograms per serving is still a fairly large, do fairly large dose, which is higher than the RDA, um, but it's, it's a good uh, substitution dose just to get thing, replete the levels that you might be lost in or low in. Okay, so that's the multivitamin dose. And this is pretty standard, I would say, among lots of multivitamins. Not all of them, but but most most good ones, I would say. Whereas in specific hair, skin, and nails supplements, so now we're on a different um, supplement. This is the one that I have, which is specific to uh, patients or thyroid patients with hair loss. You can see that the biotin dose is actually much higher. So it's 5,000. So this is 10 times higher in the hair, skin, and nail dose than it is in the multivitamin dose. And this actually matters. Okay, so the amount that you're taking probably in, interferes and in, so I guess you could put it this way the more that you're taking the more it is probably interfering with the lab test to the point that multivitamins probably do not interfere with it as much as um, some specific hair skin and nails now that actually hasn't been proven but it makes sense so logically it makes sense that this would be the case based off what I've told you how it interferes with the assay but there have been no studies which show that this this or is not the case but logically it makes sense okay so that's sort of where we're at um, now the problem with it with this is that as a thyroid patient, you need to be acutely aware of what you're putting into your body um, for multiple reasons. But as it relates to this particular topic, you need to be aware whether or not you're taking biotin. So if you haven't already, I mean, because look, it, let's imagine you're somebody taking a, this supplement. Look, there's a lot of things here. How what's the what's the chance that you are going to know the exact dosages of every single one of these one of these nutrients here? Now it might be pretty low. Now I can tell you that these are all good things. Um, because I, I made this supplement, but but you and you you know maybe you trust the person that you're purchasing your supplement from, but you need to still be aware of what it is that you're putting into your body, and the reason for that is you need to know if you need to stop taking that before you get your thyroid lab tested, right? It's pretty simple in that way. Um, but again, if you want to be safe rather than sorry, what you could do is stop taking all of your supplements two to three days before. Uh, this is a strategy that a lot of surgeons recommend. Um, so when I was in the hospital treating people or, or doing a preoperative history and physicals, the surgeons never liked anyone to be on supplements before their surgery. They just thought that they would interfere in some way. So the, the rules were to just stop taking them a week before. Uh, you could take that approach. I mean, you don't, have to, you don't have to be that aggressive and take a week off. Um, 
but something like two to three days of all supplements may be reasonable. But it may not be for some of you. Right? Some of you may feel terrible if you just stop taking your supplements for two to three days. But at the very least, look at the ingredients at the back of the list of all the things that you're taking. Seek out biotin specifically and avoid those supplements two to three days before you get your labs tested. If you want to be real vigilant about it, you can go up to five. If you just want to you know, eliminate all uh, potential issues, go up to five days. But five days, I think, is anything beyond five days is overkill. All right, so let's talk about the hair loss just a little bit here because um, I think this is really important. And this is one of the main reasons that thyroid patients take biotin. I think, well, obviously it's in multivitamins, which is important, but a lot of a lot of uh, specific hair, skin, and nail supplements do contain large doses of biotin. Now, um, this is especially important if you're a hypothyroid patient that has is suffering from hair loss. Now, the first thing that you need to realize is that as a thyroid patient, you're already predisposed to developing multiple nutrient deficiencies for a variety of reasons. So one of those could be um, the way that thyroid hormone impacts the secretion of stomach acid, um, which tends to be lower than what it should be, which reduces the, the breakdown in the absorption of nutrients. Um, thyroid hormone also predisposes you to developing conditions such as irritable bowel syndrome or SIBO or small intestinal uh, bacterial overgrowth, which again can reduce absorption. And then third, whatever number we're on, um, I think this is the third one, uh, those people who have Hashimoto's also have an increased risk of having celiac disease, which would again further reduce the amount that you're absorbing. So there's a good reason as a as a hypothyroid patient to use biotin to potentially improve your hair. Now it's not the only reason. There's a lot of other things, um, but I will say, as as someone who has treated a lot of patients with with hair loss, um, thyroid patients with hair loss, just using high doses of biotin by itself probably won't work really well um, because I think if you're because of what the picture I just painted you uh, previously, um, if you have one nutrient, micronutrient deficiency, you're more likely to have a lot of others, right? So what I generally recommend is replace a lot of them at once. So you'll see that there's my the the thyroid hair regrowth complex, which is which is here, has multiple things in it. So it doesn't just have one of those. It doesn't just contain biotin. It also contains some other things. So selenium, zinc, choline, B12. These are all important things that may um, also um, impact how your whether your hair can grow or not based off the nutrients that it needs. So if you're suffering from hair loss, at least consider that. So as a thyroid patient, what should you do? Just to wrap this up, I think I think the thing is, um, the main thing that you want to do is just ensure that you do not take biotin before your thyroid lab test. This is uh, a problem because only about 30% of people who are taking biotin realize they're taking it, which means that, you know, statistically out of the people that we're, I'm speaking to right now, there's possibly seven, uh, seven out of 10 who have no idea they're taking biotin, but are taking biotin, right? So you can see the issue here. So uh, what I recommend is you actually go, like I said before, and look at the back of all your supplements and seek out biotin and then completely avoid those supplements. As long as you do this, you should be fine. It should not interfere with your lab test. Now, that doesn't mean you don't need to make adjustments to your thyroid medication or that you're undertreated or that you have any other issue. But what it does mean is that you're limiting the chance that the biotin is interfering with your lab test and you're eliminating that variable um, sufficiently. So again, the number, the magic number here is stop taking those supplements two to three days before. I usually recommend three. If you want to be really secure, go up to five. I don't think that's always necessary, but if you want to feel good about it, that's totally fine. Um, but that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. This is definitely and absolutely something that you should be aware of if you are a thyroid patient because it affects how you might get treated, okay? Whether you be whether you're treated correctly or not. So everyone hopefully will listen to this and at least have a basic understanding of how this works. You don't have to understand everything, but just understand the basics. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'd be happy to answer them. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.